Hello, everyone. Tom Slavik, and I'm with uh, City Manager of Plymouth, Jeff Garner. Jeff, we were just talking a little bit about the uh, Aurora, Aurora Ditch, and uh, you do have some customers on that, right? The fair. We do have. We do have. The city has a couple customers: the Amador County Fair and 49er Trailer Village. If we if we have the ditch running and and if we're able to provide wa enough water to, for them uh, during during two or three months of the year in the summertime when they need it most. Uh, it's a great benefit for them, one, in terms of the cost of water because it's cheaper for raw water, and, and two, the volume of water they get. They can pull that water, they pull it right out of the ditch and uh, fill, their, fill their tanks, or in the case of the trailer village, their pond, and then they, they irrigate their land with that. So. Okay. Uh, just one more question, maybe. If there is uh, growth in Plymouth, uh, can, is the ditch a, a way to look to get water? The ditch potentially could be another source of water for this, for, for not only Plymouth, but the county as a whole. Okay. Uh, we, have, we have a large water right on the ditch, 23,000 acre feet. Uh, we don't advertise that too much. We don't, um, we, primarily right now we lose most of that water trying to bring it down the ditch in an earthen conveyance system. Right. So one of the issues about using the water for a long term purpose will be piping the ditch and coming up with a method to, 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 to transport the water that's much more efficient than okay, we have Okay, that's already. probably pretty far out in the future, yeah, right? If, it if is. Anywhere. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on a little bit. Sewer, the water green use project. What, yeah, we have, uh, this is pretty exciting because we've uh, been in touch with the state, state uh, water board, the Regional Water Quality Control Board and the Department of Health, and there's a, a vineyard, Bella Victoria Vineyard, out off Greylich Road that would like to use our sewer water to irrigate their vineyards. And uh, there, there's not a lot of money in selling sewer water, but there is strategically um, a lot of benefit in the long term from using your, uh, not only transferring your water and using it somewhere else so you're not spraying it on your own fields and having a, uh, an issue with potentially runoff or, or overloading uh, of, your, of your subsurface material with, with, um, with the ty type of constituents that the state board doesn't like you to do. Okay. Uh, so there's that benefit. And secondarily, it, it actually increases our ability to take on growth in the community without having to significantly expand our, our facilities in a, in a more rapid fashion than we normally would have to. Okay, so it looks to me like uh, for the future you've got, uh, you know, Possibilities for more sewer and more water. Right. So we have, yeah. So that on both on both sides, on the water and sewer side, we we have some very exciting possibilities out there that we're okay. looking at. Okay. We're going to get into a couple of uh, events that are come up in Plymouth uh, okay. real soon. But why don't we talk a little bit about the business climate out there in Plymouth? Now we talked about the 49er trailer park just mm -hmm. a little bit, but I know during the break uh, I was commenting, and so were you, that it's it's has a lot of uh, customers. It gets a lot of use. It's uh, quite a uh, a fine trailer park. Right, the 49er Trailer Village is has has been, as, and for as long as I can remember, because I had uh, my grandparents-in-law used to come up there in their trailer and stay there back in the 70s and 80s, and it's been a very popular park. Uh, I know it's known nationwide. Uh, Chuck Hayes, who owns it, puts on a puts on a lot of different uh, uh, things during throughout the year for the people come up to themed. Theme things like uh, Halloween, and I know he's got a volleyball tournament, and uh, things of that nature. And people just like to come up to the foothills. It's a great place to stay. It's a nice facility. They're close to the vineyards. Uh, they can go wine tasting. They can go to taste restaurant. Has, uh, there, ever, has there ever been a survey as uh, what the people do uh, there, where they might be uh, going? You know, that's something. That may be something you want to get Chuck on here and talk to him about. But the city has not. Uh, we do know that the people come into town. There's not a whole lot to do in Plymouth still. We're working on that. But uh, uh, from what I understand from talking to people who come and stay there, they just like to come up there. It's a beautiful facility. Uh, they usually come up with friends. There's usually groups of them, and they just hang out around there. And they, you know, they have their little barbecues at night and mm -hmm. campfires. And, and he's got a pool there, I know, and some other facilities. So they just like to come up and be around the foothills. All right. And uh, you do have some uh, great uh, restaurants. In Plymouth. Well, we got a few places of great places to eat. We we do. We have we've got uh, we have Beth Sogard's uh, Deli, um, and she does a lot of catering, and that's a great place. And we have Taste Restaurant, which obviously doesn't need to be spoken for. It speaks for itself. Uh, people come from all over the United States, even internationally, to go to Taste Restaurant now. Uh, the wine the wineries uh, do a lot of wine pairing dinners, so that's expanding uh, their reach a little more. Um, 
We are looking forward to getting some more restaurants and possibly a hotel in Plymouth. Uh, I'm working with uh, a developer who's, who's got a 17-acre parcel that looks like he wants to pick up and do a, a nice mixed-use uh, commercial venture there. Uh, we have, uh, hopefully opening in November or December from what I understand, uh, we have a brewery opening in, in Plymouth, right near the corner of uh, 49 and Main. It's going to be called Amador Brewery. It's not a brew pub, it's a brewery. There will be tasting. I think he's going to have a mobile food truck and that kind of thing there. Hmm. But we're really looking forward to that. It's going to be the first one in Amador County. Uh, again, the, the breweries and, and, and craft beers are, are the thing now. So we're excited that we're going to be the first place in Amador to get it. And, you know, primarily, I'll tell you, he put that brewery there on Main Street going up towards the Shenandoah Valley because he thinks that he's going to be able to draw a lot of people that, that are actually going up, families that are going up to, the, to go wine tasting that perhaps some of the people in the family would rather be drinking beer. Uh, so that, that's his market niche and that's, and that's what he's hoping to get going and, and hopefully that'll be here before the end of the year. Okay, well, that's great and it might be a good lead on to uh, talk about a couple of the events that are coming okay. up real soon, the flea market. And now you combine that, I just want everybody to know, I know we're running a spot like that, but you combine that with the garage sale on the same right. weekend. So I think if you're looking for stuff, you got to head out uh, to Plymouth. If you're looking, looking for say? junk, come to Plymouth. That's okay. right. right. Um, we, we did this year, last September, we had a, 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 a garage sale, weekend garage sale, and even though it rained like all heck, one of the, one of the few times it rained last year, uh, great turnout. Great turnout. Citywide, we had about, about 40 or 50 different places where people were selling stuff. Um, this year, that's going to be combined with the flea market. The flea market is an annual event that we put on with the fair. We have booths. We shut down Main Street. We have booths all up and down Main Street. There's food. There's knickknacks. There's whatever you can imagine. And we, we draw a ton of people to that. So the, the city council said, why not have, a, why not have a, another garage sale the same weekend? Yeah, I like we that flea market, people. too, because it's actual people will bring a lot of what you just call junk. I mean, yeah. They, bring, they <laughs> empty out their, their you know, the, the, what they have in the house. Uh, and, uh, and people from around that have booths, they must um, bring all the stuff in that they gather right. up uh, recently. Correct. And, and it's, it's not the one where you go down and buy Levi's or stuff like no. that. No. No, it's definitely... You know, brand name things that you could get at the store. It's definitely knickknacks, things that you might not find anywhere else. So, right. it's right. good. Okay, and foods out there as well during that time? They do have food. There's a pancake breakfast in the morning, I think starting at 7 o'clock, and then they have some food vendors that are there all day. And pancake breakfast and is uh, great. I think that's all you can eat. You can keep going back. It is, sure. and of course, Marlene and Glenn's is open, and I know... Uh, uh, on Saturday, Taste is open during the day, and, and Beth Sogard's Deli is open there. So a lot of places to eat there, and it's a great time. A lot of people come and have a lot of fun. It lasts all day long. Right. So and we encourage you, everyone to come. It's a okay, so if you go out there early and go to the wineries uh, later in the afternoon or you can go do to whatever you want, early, right. I mean, why would yeah. you, you know. <laughs> but anyway, so that's a great thing going on. And uh, also coming up, we've got the Sierra Century Bike Ride. Now, ah, tell us about that. The Sierra Century Bike Ride, the, the Slug Gulch 100, um, it's put on by the Say that again. The Slug Gulch 100. The flood Gulch. Slug Slug okay. Gulch. All right. Slug Gulch is a geographically a place that's up um, by 88, where uh, I forget the name of the road that comes in up there, but that's a high point up okay. there. So there's there's four different. It's a bike ride. It's not a race. First of all, okay. It's promoted by the Sacramento Wheelman out of Sacramento, out of the city of Sacramento. And it, it's limited to 1,500 riders, and they fill up every year. Uh, they basically headquarter it out of the Plymouth Fairgrounds. They, the start and stop line, if, if you will, is on Main Street in Plymouth. Hmm. And there's three different rides, and it goes all the way over to Ione and up through Sutter Creek. And then depending on whether you're doing 65, uh, 75, 100, or 122 miles, I think it is, uh, some variation of going up in the mountains up 88 and all of uh, Volcano Road and all that and Quartz Mountain coming back and you end up coming back down through Fiddletown and end up in Plymouth again. So it's pretty much an all-day event. It's a one-day affair. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great boost for the community. I mean, there's 1,500 people plus their support groups 
that are up here for two to three days. And it gets Plymouth on the map once again. It gets Plymouth on the map. It brings a tremendous amount of economic, uh, uh, it gives a good economic boost to the whole community as a whole. Okay. Because people have to stay all over to get there. All right. So, once again, the fair is coming up, and uh, that's always a, a big event for Plymouth as last, well, isn't last it? Last weekend in July is the Amber County Fair, one of the best fairs in the state. Uh, we, support, we support the fair a thousand percent. Uh, we look forward to it. I'm not sure what the theme is this year. Last year was their 75th anniversary. Um, the city of Plymouth supports the fair. We have a big, big window at the fair. Uh, this, this year we, we became sister cities with a city down in outside of Guadalajara in Jalisco, Mexico called Joco Tepec. We are anticipating that they may come up and we may have some festivities during the fair uh, to welcome them as a sister city. Here in America, so uh, we're hoping that will happen. That's going to be the theme of our booth this year, okay. and uh, so that'll be a little added bonus. There'll be a special special event and all that if we can pull that off. Okay, and it's there's no place like home. I believe that's the fair's uh, no place like theme. home. Okay, okay, all right. Remember that. No place like Plymouth. Nope, <laughs> there sure isn't. <laughs> okay, we encourage everyone to come to Plymouth for the wineries, for the food, for the fun, for the flea market. Just come and, come and enjoy it. Thanks for us. coming by, Jeff, Thank and you, we've Tom. got to run. Appreciate it. Thank you All very right. much. It's always Thank fun you. having you here. Stay with us. There's more coming up on TSPN. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN.